Chaos is an emergence, emerging movement on, on the national stage, and for some folks you know, it, it is polarizing. What do you think is the most important thing for the public to understand to embrace this movement? Now, I think what the public needs to know is that the ADOS is a movement led by folk who love black people, and especially black poor and working people, black poor and working people who are suffering has been rendered invisible, whose suffering has been normalized. And we must have voices to bring to the fore in a variety of ways. I don't believe any individual or any organization has a monopoly on love or wisdom, but we need all of our voices. We come from a people that says, lift every voice. And my dear sister, you bet my dear brother Tone, are uh, folk who have a deep love of black people. I love their... Uh, freedom, I love their uh, courage, I love their willingness to step out. And this is what we need. This is part of the history of uh, what's kept us going as a people. Uh, what do you hope comes from the you know, 2,000 people here from all across the country? What, what do you hope that they leave here with? What do you hope comes from? I hope that people can see that when you talk about the specificity of black suffering as it relates to slavery and Jim Crow, it doesn't mean that you preclude solidarity with others. It means that you're deepening your roots so that you become more equipped out of self-love to be able to be in solidarity with others. So a lot of people see this somehow as a turning inward and it's over against others, but not at all. When you love uh, your mama or your daddy, that doesn't mean that you're hating somebody else's mama or daddy. But the love actually, if when it spills over, is much more real when you're loving your own mama. Do you believe that reparations are achievable? Do you believe that the country will ever embrace this? Real you know, Sunrise used to say, you know, we black folk have tried everything possible and we still haven't got it, so let's try the impossible. And he's off on the mothership with his genius. We black people, we've tried everything. We continually bring power and pressure to bear. We continually raise our voices. So I think it could be. You just don't know. You just don't know. But you got to go down swinging no matter what. The integrity of the struggle is not only whether you're able to achieve it at this particular moment, maybe for grand grandchildren, great grandchildren, but it's not just reparation, but it is a freedom for everybody. You see, black freedom is inseparable and indivisible from the freedom of poor people and working people. And when the vision is right, that's true for folks around the world. How do you compare this ADOS movement to uh, the civil rights movement of the 1960s? Well, it's very different. Very different. We, we were just coming out of uh, neo-slavery. We were just coming out of uh, out of Jim Crow. Uh, we had a leadership that was courageous, but oftentimes it was a um, a black middle class leadership. Exactly. The leadership was a black educated and professional one. So oftentimes, once their needs were satisfied in the black bourgeoisie, they did not make it a priority to focus on the black poor and the black working class. Now our black bourgeoisie has expanded in an unprecedented way, but our precious black poor folk and black working folk are catching even more hell than they did then. Mm -hmm. That's part of the paradox of our situation. That's part of what ADOS, I think, is all about. And that's why I'm here. I like to be in places where people are manifesting love to black people. Real, okay, so we'll talk here. There are some black folks that aren't even down with this movement, right? That's fine. That's what do you say to those folks who don't they'll understand? Go out and do their thing. They don't get it. Go out and form their own organization. Go out to express their own love. Go out and fight for justice. We've never had one organization for everybody at all. You see. And further down the road, if the love is real, there'll probably be some overlap and solidarity, too. Thurgood Marshall couldn't stand Martin Luther King Jr. He couldn't stand the street activists. He wanted to work in the courts. Martin Luther King Jr. understood Thurgood had a job to do, but Thurgood was wrong. He needed folk in the streets. But Thurgood went on to be a force for good in his own legalistic way. Brother Martin, force for good in his way. We needed Ella Baker. We need Malcolm. We need Fannie Lou Hamer. We need Curtis Mayfield and Nina Simone. They all lifted their voices, my brother. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much.